Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David. Darling, come on, David, wake up. <laughs> Quickly, David, please wake up. Is it time to get up already? Well, practically, please. Oh, don't turn over. Come on, get up. What is it, a fire? It's snow, David. What snow? Snow on the ground. Snow all over everything. Snow what? All right, I guess it's no use if you don't appreciate it. Go on back to sleep. Now, let me see. You're trying to tell me that it's snowed outside, if I understand you correctly? You understand me perfectly correctly the first time. Has it snowed a great deal? It snowed enormously. Oh, aren't you going to get out and see? It won't go away. Well, it might. Snow melts. Then I suppose I'll have to look, or I'll be nagged until I do. Go on. Act as if you're not interested. It won't hurt my feelings. I didn't do it. Where are my slippers? Oh, listen, you don't need any slippers. It's warm today. It's always warm when it snows, you know. It's for this great blasé performance you're putting on, Mr. Norton. I noticed the minute I said snow, you stopped yawning. You were wide awake. How could I help it with you jabbing my ribs? I did not jab you. Lead me to the window, love. Lead yourself, love. Oh, this floor's cold. <laughs> hey. Why didn't you tell me it had snowed? What? Why didn't you tell me it had snowed? I heard you the first time, but I did not believe my ears. Oh, you said, uh, David, it snowed. But you didn't mention anything like this. You like it? Mm-hmm. It really snowed, didn't it? No, white. Nothing in the world is white as snow. It must be at least, oh, eight inches deep. How can you tell? See the stone wall over there? Oh, oh, yes. Looks like thick marshmallow icing on a cake. Delicious. Always thinking of your stomach. <laughs> listen to how quiet everything is outside. There's not a thing to listen to. Nothing moving. Not even any footprints or anything. We're just like an island. Now, how do you like winter in the country? It hmm? is gorgeous. There's only one thing wrong. It had to go and snow by on my back. Couldn't wait till I was awake and could see it, of course. Well, if it... If it had waited, it wouldn't be all ready for us now. You you mean you, you mean to look at? I mean more than to look at. Snow's not just meant to look at, you know. David, do you mean? I mean exactly. Oh, but David, you have to get dressed and have breakfast and go to New York and go to work. Yeah, I have to get dressed. I have to have breakfast, but that's all I have to do. Oh, David, that's what I love about you, darling. You would give up architecture. All because this is our first snow on our farm. <laughs> well, it's nice sentiment, but unfortunately, it's not exactly true. Well, I don't get you. You're talking contradictions. Well, you may have forgotten, but this happens to be the morning I have to be in Eastbrook. Oh! At 11 o'clock, I'm due to meet with the school board. Blueprints in hand, you know? Oh, darling, you plan everything so beautifully. No, don't I, though? You say the meeting's not till 11? Not until 11. Ah, uh, let's see, that's about... Uh, about uh, three and a half hours, exactly. Plenty of time to go. Then we can use the one that we found in the loft of the barn. Sledding. I haven't been sledding since I don't know when. I bet you it's not anywhere as near as long as, as, as since I've been sledding. Oh, you make yourself sound as old as Jared Tucker. Oh, David. I hope we'll live to be old together. Oh, we'll live to be older than that together. I love you through snows and summers and sleet and sun. Hold me tight. Darling, you'll get cold standing around in your pajamas. Everything's but so quiet, not a sound, almost like... I wonder why does all this snow make me think of the cemetery? Because you're a silly cluck. Hmm, guess so. Now, get yourself dressed or Papa will spank. Oh, let's just put on our bathrobes and ask Mama to go sledding with us. Mama's probably still asleep. This is not a morning for Mama or for anybody to sleep on. Hey, David, throw me my slippers. I am not standing over there. I'm standing over here. I was trying not to hit you. Oh, you almost did. I'm going to go and wake up Mama. Hey, tell her we'll make her a nice snowball for our breakfast. Will okay? do. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Oh, bum, 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 Jack Frost in person. Come in, Jack. Mama, what you doing up? Any objections? I'm looking at the snow. Oh, David said you'd be asleep. David was wrong. 
must have snowed all night. Did you ever see anything as beautiful? It certainly looks pure. Oh, I don't regret summer a bit. Mama, have you any ski pads? I should say not. What for? For the snow. Snow doesn't need them. Oh, but you will. You can't go sledding in a fur coat and dress. I can't go what? Can't go sledding dressed like a lady. Claudia, this lady has no intentions of going sledding. Not at all. But Mama, it's full of snow outside. I shall admire it and no more. Oh, Mama, since when are you said to stick in the snow? Since I arrived at the age of reason. Well, <laughs> darling, when a person starts blaming their unwillingness to partake in the gayer things of life and blame it on their reason and good sense, it's it's hopeless to try and convince them otherwise. Yes, sir. They are a lost cause. David, you ought to be ashamed. You've been eavesdropping. And Mama is a lost cause. Mm. Very lost, very contented. And don't try to rescue her, please. I am surprised at you, Mrs. Brown, refusing some good, wholesome sport. <laughs> Why, a little sledding would do you a world of good. I don't care to be done good to, thank you. Well, then come on, darling. Pay no more attention to your decrepit old mother. Sticks and snow can break my bones. Last chance, Mama. Then I will take this opportunity to say that I think you'll both be sorry. Sorry? For what? You'll see. She's so cryptic today, David. Oh, she's just envious. Because you and I still have the pulse of life in our veins. Oh, you sure do talk pretty, Mr. Norton. Mm, you sure talk nonsense just <laughs> because there's a little snow. Little eight inches. You're going to risk your neck. Well, now, don't you worry about our neck. No soft, you know. What about breakfast? When we get back. And you better tell Bertha to make it griddle cakes. We're going to have appetites as big as houses. Come on, let's get dressed, David. Leave Mama to her knitting. Have fun. And for heaven's sakes, be careful, children. Remember, you're not children anymore. We are children at heart, Mama. Can you think of a better place? Hey, David, wait for me. Oh, I wish we were out in the snow already, sledding and snowballing and rolling in it up to my ears. Oh, my gosh, I never realized this hill of ours is so steep. Did you, David? Well, pick up your feet. I'm trying to, but it's beautiful but exhausting. Sit down on the sled. I'll pull you up. What do you take me for? A lazy female. Come Just on. Just for that, I will walk up. Thank you. You know, the trouble is going down is so much faster than going up. It's gravity. Nonsense. Sledding. Oh, David, life can be so simple when people let it. That it can. David. What? Turn around. I have a surprise for you. Hey, whoa. My oh. ear. Oh. Snowball hit you right in the ear. I'm terrific. Distracting me by talking philosophy. I should have known you're nothing but a hoyden. David, now, David, what are you going to do? David, remember, you're bigger and stronger than I am, and you... I remember. And you're, you're, you're too adult to throw snowballs. You're much too dull. You always tell Come me that you don't... Come over here. Come over here. Funny little snowball. It's it funny. was a wet, cold snowball. Prepare yourself for your destiny, Get Mrs. Norton. Get away from me, you big bully. Calling me you. names. Down you go. Ah! <laughs> you brute. Claudia, you're no. pulling my hair. Ah. Now, put your face in. Oh, <laughs> now, promise me you'll never throw another snowball when I'm not looking again. Oh, I'll never promise you. Ouch, I'm choking. Do you promise? Yes, I promise you fully. Ouch. Say, I'm up in the snow. Now, what, do you, oh. what do you think I am? <laughs> Running down the back of your neck. <laughs> like an avalanche. Oh, you're an idiot, you know. Oh, you seduced me in behaving like one. It's wonderful that you can. Oh, I love a serious man when he's not serious. It proves you are. What? Serious. Well, that makes sense, but only to me. Oh, that's all that matters. Now, come on, me. get up out of that drift before you freeze Ooh, stiff. I am. So much snow. Good thing it's soft, that's all I can say. Well, now that you're on your feet again, Mrs. Norton, and we're alone on top of the oh. hill with no one to hear, I'll, um, I'll tell you something. I don't trust you. I never will again. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, I see you mean business. You know something? What? You're a fairly nice girl. I am. Mm-hmm. A quite nice girl. I am? Well, not uh, bad looking in those ski clothes. Oh, compliments, imagine. You know something else? No, what? You are probably the worst sledder I've ever sledded with. Well, finally, the truth. What's the matter? Did you never go sledding as a tot? I lived in Virginia, remember? Yeah, I remember, but it snows in Virginia, well, too. Well, Mama was nervous. 
After watching you today, I, I don't blame her. When I was a tot, I had no big, strong man to teach me like now. Oh, listen, those poor crows, they must be freezing. Well, come on, let's go home. You're freezing, too? No, just starving. Mm, me, too. I have that school board meeting, remember? Yeah, I think you belong not on the board, but in the kindergarten. Well, thanks. All right, last ride down. Oh, all good things must come to an end, I suppose. All right, now, here, you, you slid on the, sit on the front of the sled. And, yes, yes, and I'll I'm Put your here. feet on the steering bar. There you Ooh. are. I know. You don't have to tell me each time, David. I learn quick. Hey, David, it's slipping. Hold on to me. All right, now, here I me... come. Yes? All right, give me the rope. Here it is. Now, hold me. All right, we're off. Go. Here we go. We'll stop right at the front door oh, of the house. Oh, isn't it wonderful? You're going so Whoa. fast as the heaven. Keep your head down. Watch that tree. It's cold. We're teetering, David. Hold we're on. We're almost there. Hold on. David, hold me. I'm going to fall off. No, you're not. Look, hey, there's Mom at the front door of the house. Let's you oh. off. Make us a good one. I'm slipping off. I'm gone. No, you're I'm not. Gone. Hang on. Hang on. Oh. Oh. <laughs> David, are, are you all right? I, I think so. What happened to us? You and David fell off your sled. No, you don't say so. Well. You don't believe it, eh? <laughs> I certainly don't believe <laughs> Two it. Two grown people. Well, if you can get yourselves out of the snow, the griddle cakes are ready and waiting. Griddle cakes. Hey, David, help me up. I'm in a drift. Help out you. to my neck. I can, I can hardly help myself. Ooh, Wait a uh, oh, golly, my legs Ooh. are so stiff I can hardly... Oh. Oh, what's the matter, darling? My arm. I ache in every inch of my arm. This is what's become of that gay couple, so free of heart, so very young, who went sledding an hour ago. Yep, this is all that's left. No, yeah, this is all that's left. This is just the pieces. <laughs> and you win, Mrs. Brown. Oh, what do you mean? Well, we're not quite as young as we were. Oh, no. Just one hour ago. You want your teenager's friends to feel welcome in your house. One of the easiest ways to manage that is to have plenty of Coca-Cola in the refrigerator. For Coke is the number one requirement of any youthful get-together. Have a case put in the car today when you're marketing. Coke offers a pleasant, inexpensive way to make people of all ages feel at home. Have you ever seen such a pair as Claudia and David? I uh, wish I had my ski suit here. I'd show them a thing or two about uh, belly whopping. Don't tell me you're as big a baby as they are. Bigger? Wonderful. Oh, Joe, you look as if you need a little haircut. Oh, don't remind me. I know I do. Now, my wife's been after me to get one for a few days now. I, I uh, just don't seem to have had the chance. Mm, that reminds me. I noticed David's was a little shaggy today, too. Well, it usually is. Uh, why don't you remind him? Oh, David doesn't usually forget that sort of thing. He must have a reason, you know. Besides, I don't think men like to be reminded. How right you are, Mrs. Brown. Maybe tomorrow he'll have a haircut. Till then, goodbye, Joe. Goodbye, Mrs. Brown. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Starr. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>